I guess he's just a regular guy. He's a family man. He's a structural engineer, works on skyscrapers as a beautiful little kid. Um, and as we start this, this movie, we see him in kind of an uncomfortable situation where he's stressed. He's um, been out of the family house. He's moving back home, trying to make it work with his wife, trying to be there for his kid who doesn't quite understand the dynamics between his mother and his father and a kid who's also um, suffering from diabetes. He's not very well and very sensitive child as well. And, and, and so you kind of house John Garrity in this almost like a family drama at first, but with this um, almost movie monster building in the background. Um, and, and by the time that comes into play, this comic Clark, which has taken everybody by surprise, um, you're already now very much involved with John Garrity as a father, as a working man, and as um, somebody trying to bring his family back together, but not quite understanding the few additional challenges that are going to present themselves <laughs> and what it really means to bring your family together. This movie grabbed me right from the star. I always love these larger ideas um, where there is some kind of crisis going on either with a community, a country, or humanity. Um, but what I really loved about this and knowing the director that I was going to work with, but also knowing that the, the script that I was reading was that it felt like an inside job. It came from the inside out. That it's more... Um, you're involved with this family, you're involved with these people, you're, you, you know, it's like with this intimate level of knowledge of, of character portraits. But then rather than the typical kind of action movie where you're focusing on the bigger thing, the comet, that's almost in the background and only builds as the movie goes on. But this is really, I, I felt like the themes in the movie, that it was incredibly emotional and fraught. And it's just this family going through hell, but them as a snapshot of what all of humanity are going through um, in terms of just the gauntlet being thrown down from moment to moment and the challenge is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and what will they do within that? You know, what will a family do to stay together? What will a father do um, to protect his family? And, and that's also what I liked, is it wasn't your typical hero who's going up there to like punch the comet in the face. He's, uh, you know, this is just a simple man and a family. Almost the hero here is almost the, the, the family unit themselves. The mother's a hero, the son is a hero. And, and, and sometimes heroism is literally just fighting enough to survive. So I really enjoyed the, the subtleties in it. It took me by surprise, the freshness. The reality as well is, again, not all about the spectacle and the action, but also about the truth, as we're seeing now in, in days of this pandemic, is sometimes it's just the messiness. It's the not knowing. It's the disinformation. It's the, um, you know, how do you, how do you even make it to the airport? There's traffic. How do you say goodbye to your neighbors who two minutes ago were your best friends and everything was hunky-dory? And, and in that short space of time, you realize, oh my God, life is about to change for everybody and I'll never see you again. And I got to now basically drive away and leave you to die. There's, there's so many kind of moral challenges and reflections in the movie, as well as all the bells and whistles all the, the action and the spectacle, which I feel is even more powerful and more truthful and authentic because we are taking it. We start on the, the micro, on the family, on the human, on the people. Um, and therefore, you're drawn into this very grounded, organic relationship that could be any family on the planet going through any of the multiple stresses that families and relationships go through. Um, that makes the rest of the movie and all that spectacle so much more powerful and real because there's, a, there's very much a, a truth to it. So I felt like it could definitely take an audience by surprise and take them on a journey and inspire them and scare the behebe Jesus out of them and also make them sit and think about where we are in the world today. 
where are we as, as, as humans? And as, as we are being asked this question as, you know, with everything that's going on in our planet, Again, one of the things I really loved about this movie was how, you know, often you do scenes and you enjoy doing them and they can be powerful, but you still know that they're ridiculous um, and they're just part of the story that you're trying to tell, whereas these scenes felt so truthful and so devastating. And that's, that, that was definitely um, a scene that struck a chord with me when you go from essentially watching the Super Bowl, watching parts of a comet hitting the earth and thinking... This is fun. This is going to be cool um, to realizing, oh, my God, something so much more um, dangerous and devastating is afoot. And the people that you were looking at who you were probably going to golf with the next day, you're never going to see again. And you're having to leave your kids best friends in the driveway. And that and the performances in that scene were also um, so profound and, and devastating. So when um one of her friends comes out with her child begging us to take her child to the Air Force Base to give her a chance. But of course we can't. Um, but that was played so powerfully that every time I had to drive away, it was goosebumps and tears welling. And, and the whole neighborhood could hear it and see it. And again, it's when this is written so beautifully and then directed and performed so well, it just... It, it, it leaves a, a, a truth and a power behind it because you could just so see that happening. And that's this movie the whole way through. What I really love is that at first you have no idea why he's selected. Um, and, and neither do the neighbors. You know, he's, he's receiving these presidential alerts that are saying report to this naval base or report to this sorry, Air Force base with your family. Um, and it's very specific and it seems uh, very authentic. But at the same time, it makes no sense whatsoever. And nobody else is getting these messages. And why is it him? Um, but yeah, as, as it transpires, he has certain skills. They're nothing spectacular you know it, it, this is not Mike Banning and has fallen he doesn't he's not he's not trained to protect anybody but he's an engineer and the government are already looking to a world that's going to look very different and uh, nobody knows how many people are going to make it through this comet strike there is no escaping it um, but so therefore what who is going to be involved in the new world order and that would be obviously people like doctors and nurses, engineers, people who can rebuild, people who can create, people who have certain skills that would be useful to, uh, to a, a society basically starting again in a very different part of the world, which is, of course is, is Greenland. Um, and I feel like that comes with a certain amount of relief um, because he now has a chance. They have a fighting chance to make it. But even then, there's still... Uh, it's by no means easy, and even they don't realize what those, what those challenges are going to entail just to get to that Air Force Base, just to get in. But, um, but I think it also leaves them with a, with a sense of survivor's guilt. Why us? Why were we chosen? You know, it could have been any of... I know he's not the only structural engineer on the planet. You know, why are they choosing him and not any of the others? Or why would this nurse be chosen or this doctor? Or um, So... It's a, it's a very uh, interesting time. Um, we're all facing the same challenge. Humanity, suddenly we recognize each other. And we see that whether you're in China, whether you're in the US, or whether you're in Europe, we're all facing the same problems, as is the case with the comic Clark. It is the great equalizer. But within realizing that at that point, the fragility of humanity and how we are all just the same, there is also this elitist thing still going on, as we've seen today. Some people could get tests easier. Some people have access to better treatment. And in this case, in our movie, some people are being chosen and some people aren't. And of course, the ones with money are going to have more of a chance to maybe escape this. Probably not, but more of a, more of a chance. So I liked both those different aspects, you know, but again, it leads into what I felt was the authenticity of the movie and the complexity of what it means um, to both the family and then the more macro to, to humanity as a whole as they face their, their ultimate demise and, and the various ways that that plays out. Whether it's, this again, a thing that I loved in the movie is 
all the different reactions to that, whether people are protesting or celebrating or looting, you know, it's like you, you're defined by the challenge in front of you. And, and this challenge is really um, in people's last moments. How are they how are they going to be defined? And who 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 does play a hero? Who is a coward? Who doesn't care? Who doesn't believe? Um, or, or who sacrifices themselves or others? Who fights for their own, for their family? It's um it's the kind of the the, the messiness and the all inclusiveness of all these different which we are seeing today again and the the different reactions to what's going on in our world. I think on on uh, on the one hand, John feels like he has a lot to make up for for his family. He's living with an exceptional amount of guilt, which we discover as the movie goes on exactly what is happening. But there's obviously been a breakdown in his relationship with his wife. He feels very badly for his kid, who he can see is hurting from what's been going on between them. So he now feels this additional responsibility to make sure that his family is safe. But even more than that, what I like is just the regular normality in some ways of this man who could be any man. He's every man. He's just a father who will do anything to protect his wife and his kid. And that's something that I think is, again, why I know from my experience and friends and other people that have seen it, why they find it so powerful is in some ways the lack of heroism in these heroes. You know, they're they're everyday heroes. It's not one man standing against a country or one, you know, to be honest, the kind of roles I often play myself, this is not that guy. He has no um, special skills. He just has a lot of love and passion and, and, and courage, which I think would be brought out in, in almost anybody in these circumstances. But you also see it coming from, um, from, from John's wife, Alison, and even from the kid. Even the kid has his moments where he has to stand up and be incredibly courageous to help keep his family together, you know. And 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 again, that's what I what what I, what I loved was that in the family, you know. And then also seeing that as we brush past people, as we come into contact with other people who are heroes who help us, who are villains who try to stop us in our way. And and it's again another theme that I really liked in the movie was this idea of there's a little bit of good and even the worst of us and a little bit of bad and even the best of us. And I think that that's really what this movie paints so beautifully as we, as we go on this road trip to try and survive is people doing good actions, bad people doing the, you know, the right actions in moments and then good people doing terrible things, but maybe for the right reasons. And so you as an audience, you're so involved and you're being dragged into this. But at the same time, you're like, it's so hard to to kind of accuse or point the finger because you go, would I do the same thing? I'm only trying to save my wife. Um, so it's it's fascinating in, in that respect. I think what I, what I love is the movie becomes, one, it's highly entertaining and exciting, but then it really becomes a conversation afterwards as to you know, again, who we are and who would we be in this situation. There is an element of redemption in John Garrity's story. Um, and part of that, I think, is conscious. He's very aware at the start of all this going on, where he's at with his wife and what he's feeling, the guilt of, of past actions. Um, but then a lot of the redemption also is it, it, his redemption comes also from a place that's not conscious. He's not trying to redeem himself. She just sees in her husband the good aspects that come out at a time like this when humanity itself is in this incredible crisis, as are they. And she sees what her husband does and knows what he's gone through. And of course, he knows. I mean, he's he has to pay the ultimate sacrifice in a way um, to try and get back to his family. And, and, and um, he goes through so many uh, incredible traumas to try and get there. And, and, and including, as I say, like the, the kind of the ultimate sacrifice in some ways as to what a man would do to, to ensure his survival, 
But in that moment, it's not even about his survival. It's, it's literally about getting to his family to ensure their survival. And, and again, that's just so beautifully crafted and, and, and involves one of the most um, violent and, 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 again, I'd say truthful because it's a violent scene where he's fighting for his life and the life of his family. But it's, again, as is our movie, it's messy and real and just pure passion and emotion and terror. Um, and it's ugly. And, and it's a, a very, very destructive. But at the same time, that is part of the, the, the sacrifice which brings his, his redemption. Believe it or not, I actually knew quite a lot about comets and asteroids. I, I, I'm a big fan of, of the, the sky, of planets, of stars, of universe, of galaxies, of, of comets, asteroids. So I knew a bit about it and actually could point Rick towards a couple of documentaries that I'd seen of um, actual impacts and, and, what that would, and, and, and what that would entail, what that would be like to people like us, you know, and... and, and um, so, um, yes, I did, and we did some extra research, whether it was about the comet itself, but also about what are the roles of first responders in times like this? What are, they, what are the parts of society that would break down? Who reacts how? Who decides to take the higher road? Who's out there trying to help other people? And who's out there just trying to, yeah, you know, help themselves? But... Um, so, so yes, we did some research, but to be honest, that was not, that was more in my role as, as producer in developing the, the script w with Rick. But in terms of John Garrity, my character, no, he doesn't know jack shit about comets and, and doesn't really care until it becomes important. And, and again, I, I, I liked that as well. I, I always use the word messiness, but it's messiness or kind of organic or, or, or groundedness, but just the fact that as the comet's hitting, sometimes you're affected by it, sometimes you're not. Parts of it are relevant to you, parts of it involve waiting around, parts of it involve cues, lines, panic, boredom. It, it, there's, there's a lot of things, Is this builds, but there's always this inevitability that it's coming and there's no stopping it. Again, I feel like as I talk, it's not even the question you ask, but as I talk, I keep thinking how uncanny it is. None of us knew this, although it seems like every movie I make ends up being about a subject that happens after we shoot it, but it's, it couldn't be more relevant to, to where we're at now, this inevitability and, and this thing that just builds and builds and builds. And there's, you can... You can make a you can make a bit of a difference, but really, it's a foe either way too big for us to come to terms with, or way too small for us to come to terms with. But it's that they're both examples of 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 um, things that would have us on our knees. Um. There was pretty much no green screen, no nothing. It just involved me looking down the road, imagining seeing almost like a ripple effect coming up um, and then falling falling back onto the ground. Um, no, there was no, the, everything else was just put in uh, digitally. So the movie is called Greenland because <laughs> that's where they're trying to get to. And um, Greenland is, well, the U.S. government have built uh, um, uh, quite a few nuclear bunkers there 40, 50 years ago that have been in disuse. But unbeknownst to us, the, the, the information about this comet hitting Earth was, was available to them, of course, way before it was available to us. And they had already been planning um, how the logistics of how to get as much of the population over there and then also who in that population is, a, is applicable, who qualifies to get over there. And, uh, and, and, and they're basically being flown over there at incredibly short notice um, in military planes. But I also think Greenland just symbolically 
um, there's such a, a, a freshness and hope. It feels like the last bastion of, of nature, of mankind, of hopes, of something so, so beautiful and raw and untouched. Um, the, the locations in this movie, again, they were just, they were all, we were where we were, you know, which very much helped. We were on freeways, we were in Air Force bases, we were, you know, in the housing estates with the families. There was no studio work here. We were always on location. Um, and that worked, I, I felt, really well, again, in being in the truth of every moment. Um, it's easy when you're in a car jam with hundreds of people and you're all kind of running to get to a place. It's, and, and that was definitely that Air Force base. One, the crowds that we had, um, and we're sitting around like five or six C-130 cargo planes, which are insanely big. So you have the scope and the epicness that we were looking for in this movie with thousands of extras. And, and of course, the military gave us all their personnel as well. They were incredibly helpful. And, and that's another thing that, that re reminded me of, again, where we're at today is... And it's something I feel like our movie touches on and makes a point of on a couple of occasions is first responders, those who are just there doing their job, the unsung heroes um, who, you know, there's a beautiful scene in this movie where my wife is furious at this colonel for not getting the help that she needs to, to, to get her kid through. And the woman says, you know, no, none of my none of my family are going 99 percent of of the military have not been chosen to go to greenland but they're still there they're volunteering and and that's the world um well morena is morena is amazing i i i i was very excited to get her on board on this movie um, and you know, the first couple of days I thought, oh, she's going to be tough. She, you know, she's coming in, she knows what she wants. She's going to, and she's very serious. And, and you know what, it became maybe my favorite bonding experience on a movie. We became exceptionally close and it really helped because we had to be, um, we spent a lot of time together and she's a phenomenal actress who had to go through like reading this already reading it going, what have I got to go through? But then I would read her stuff and go. <laughs> It's really, it's like, that is some intense shit that she has to deal with. Um, you know, having your kid taken right in front of you that you think you're never going to see again when you're already living in a world of uh, just complete hell. Um, and just, it was, I felt our, our chemistry together is is great. It works so great in the movie, but I just also love the chemistry of, of us working together and performing. There was a real truth to it. It was very easy. We just fit together well and, and fit together in all the good ways and the bad ways, you know, and the issues that we had and in the love that, that really comes through in our relationship as the movie progresses, as the story progresses, which again, by the way, is, is the other thing is I find is when you strip it all away in times like this, in life or death situations, what is important? And that is your family. Again, we're seeing that today, that everything else, all the artifice is stripped away and you go, who, what are we really here for? And you're here, you know, for your family, for your loved ones. And, and I think that's a very important message in the movie is everything else, none of it really matters. You know, your, your job, your money, the size of your house. Um, it's, being around the ones the ones that you love and I feel like this movie really gives that message very very powerfully and that's why you can go on this ride and by the end you're incredibly drained and like I've seen it now with a lot of people and I love it because people love this movie and it does take a big chunk out of them and they're left Roger was great um, yeah, Roger's going to be a, a, a big star. He's an incredibly sweet kid. He has such a sweet disposition and he's an incredibly talented actor and he really brings so much heart and soul to, to this movie. And I, I loved my stuff with him and I really loved the stuff between Morena and Roger. I think that works so, so beautifully. The hell that they have to go through together and this mother just trying to protect her son um, through all these um, challenges.
I feel like it works well in this movie because, you know, listen, we've all been now, we live in a world, sadly, where I feel like most of us have been in situations where um, something pretty dangerous has happened around us and suddenly, you know, and you have family all trying to get through and you know they're trying to get through, they're in Scotland or England or somewhere else going, are you okay? Are you like even just now with the with the looting and the and and the the and the rioting, you know, um, it just it's it's kind of crazy. So I feel like often cell phones are used excessively in movies, and it can take away from the drama. and And I find it annoying. But in this movie, because it is so essential for us trying to stay together, and of course, and I and I have that line where you go, you would think technology would work in a crisis, but of course it doesn't. And and it doesn't. And 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 it means that we're so close together, and yet so far apart. We could be anywhere. They could just as easily be on the moon, you know. And that leads to. Um, Really, I think a lot of great tension and anxiety, and and um, but also some humor. Just at the times that messages come through, it's always like, really. And now I'm seeing this. Now it's come through now. Um, but yeah, no, I I feel like that that part, the the cell phones technology, all all worked really, really well in the movie. Um, well, I, I feel like once you make a movie with Rick, it's, I don't really know where else to go. <laughs> it's like, it's nobody, nobody else is Rick. Um, I, 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 weirdly, the first movie I produced was, um, um, Law Abiding Citizen. And I interviewed Rick for that movie. And, and in the end we went with somebody else, but he was always my favorite. So, and that was 12 years ago. And we always said we were going to work together. And then, um, so taking on Angel has fallen and and the way that he helped us rediscover that franchise. Um, I've never known anybody who works as hard as Rick, who is, is passionate and excited and who knows more about the process of making a movie. That is every single department. He seems to know each of their jobs better than they do. And I don't mean that in a, you should know what you're doing. He just is well up on that information and experience and he doesn't stop and he pushes me to my limit and we have our moments we both have very strong opinions but it's always comes from a respectful loving place and i know that he has my back like nobody else does and i know that it, it, it before um angel has fallen i went to see his movie shot caller uh, with the idea of maybe taking Angel has fallen to him. And at first I was like, okay, I don't know if he's going to be right for this. And the first few minutes I thought, because Rick has a way of, of, of shooting the opening of his movies very plainly. And then it sneaks up and it grabs you. And the plainness is just the truth of every moment. And you kind of think you're in one movie and then always it comes up and it grabs you by the balls and takes you into a very different movie. And that opening... Uh, five, 10 minutes of just sitting with characters is all the more powerful and, and, and desired in order to take you on that journey. Hi guys, it's Debbie, and here's today's daily fact. Gerard Butler may be a familiar face on the cinema scene, but he never planned on being an actor as he graduated in law. But as his work interviews as a lawyer failed, he decided to take on his way more famous job. Remember to click below to subscribe or on the side for more great content.